What's poppin', folks? Welcome to another episode of Ignorant Bliss. Um, this episode is with my man, my friend, my fellow culture trapping podcast member, Sean Pryor. Um, like some of the previous episodes I've released recently, this was recorded last fall, back when Sean was doing uh, Promoting Force, which released in issues last fall around uh, football season in November. Uh, it's recently he has come out in a trade. Um, there'll be links in the show notes. Uh, we'll be talking about some of his ideas on how to promote this book and change how, I guess, handling the pre-order system and soliciting and getting people to know about how to purchase comics, especially from any perspective, is done. We also talk about, uh, you know, ideas or crafting new ideas and doing doing things in a new way within the comic space and just some good overall friendly talking. So I hope you guys enjoy. Please uh, read the show notes for any links or stuff we talk about within the show. It's mostly about the Forest comic. Go find it on Amazon and cop it or your comic book store and enjoy the episode. Fifty-two hundred different ways, different ways get paid. Watch me flex my muscle, moving weight. Still got other ways. As it tablets and this person came, ain't the only thing. 4K TVs, iPhones, that's my game. Even wedding rings, water license, Wi-Fi for the cheap. And some bootleg cable, I be riding Ubers for the free. To the app disabled, trackers out the rentals, posting pictures. Sell the whip on Craigslist, fuck around and bring it to your front door. Light your over with fifty-two hundred different ways. I mean, man, so hustle, man. I move everything, plays for the triple double. Like yeah. I do Kareem, my first job was yeah. in the kitchen. I, know, I was washing yeah. dishes, robbing yeah. niggas, jigging me. I made it's it, crazy, I man. Like Nowadays I work my work. Uh-huh. That uh, really think sentient orange turd out in Houston, Houston basically telling people they should be thrilled about the fact that like folks have lost their homes and and how this is a tremendous event. And I'm just like, man, y'all really put this turd in office, huh? Hey man, he, he might be the worst Republican president we've seen in the modern era of of America. Yeah, oh, he is. There, there is no, there is no question of a doubt that he is. But um, this is what they wanted. This is what they wanted. You know, this is what they wanted. Uh oh, but no, man, I'm talking about happy shit though. Um, I, uh, I um, crap, I lost my train of thought. So remember when we was talking on that culture trap and it was me, you and Daryl? Yeah. And we was talking about how like Michael K. Williams was just like, yo, I can't come back and do these reshoots. I'm doing another movie. And and like Ron Howard was like, yo, fam, I got to do what I got to do. So I just got to take you out this movie altogether. Um, I guess they're bringing in Paul Bettany now. Mm. To be they're that bringing, character, I'm guessing. No, uh, it might be a completely different character altogether. Like it's it's all been under wraps. Like like Ron Howard has like been working this working this whole Star Wars hire to his favor from the day he jumped on. Because I ain't never seen Ron Howard use Twitter like he's using it right now. Yo, young Opie out here, huh? Yo, Opie out here for Lucasfilm. Like yo, y'all want to give me some more Star Wars films? Yo, Kathleen. Yo, yo, I got this. I got you. Don't you worry about it. I'm going to make sure everybody know about this Han Solo movie, man. He got, man, he got tweets. He got tweets with uh, Don Glover with, like, the young Lando uh, 80s Bobby Brown haircut. He got, like, Wait, 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 What? Yo, like, okay. It's not the it's not a Gumby as much as like you remember them flat tops we used to have them high top fades where like like um part of the way through there'd be that big like um you know like just um part and like so it looked like you had two haircuts. Bruh, are you telling me young Lando is New Jack Swing Lando? Almost. Almost, unless like unless they like curled his hair like you know right before they started filming. But yo, I'm for real. I'm for real. See now, I gotta find this picture. I gotta find this picture now so you can see it. Yeah, 
Young Lent, yo, New Jack. See, I messed up because I was watching a little unsung on High Five, and I was in, I'm in my like little New Jack swing more right yeah. now. You know what I'm saying? And Teddy Riley. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh man, this is too much. This is too much. Yo, man, yo, that unsung on High Five. I only got to see like the first half of it. Like, it's amazing how talented those cats was, and all the bullshit that happened to them. Fam, that's just like every story of of like music I love how Ung Song became black uh, behind the music though <laughs> yeah yeah no doubt like it no rock like, music here like we don't have to deal with any rock groups just just R&B groups and, and yep. rappers yes that faded Yo, away like that's the one thing I miss about not having that channel is that I don't get to see this and you can't buy those you can't buy those episodes anywhere you know, like you might try to be able to kind of torrent them, maybe. But even then, see, that's something like it's it's something to where, like, you know, like, um, how can I say this politely? Um, normally stuff like, you know, when something is like, you know, when everybody knows about the mainstream America finally hops onto it, it's always available somewhere somehow. But this is something that is so just like. All this, the majority of the stuff that you see on Un- Un- Song is basically from like groups from like the six, from like seventies, the eighties, and the early nineties. Basically, like all the music and culture that like white artists have just taken now and recycled. Yep. And and so and so because and so like, but still like, even though like these you know these why these white folks don't know that like if they did, I'm I'm telling you, all that stuff would be available for like you know either. We'd be able to find it a lot better. Just let me re- let me phrase it like that. We'd be able to find it a lot better than than, than we can right now. Cause like I love that stuff. Like I love watching those, man. Like the first one I ever watched was on Alexander O'Neill. Yeah, that was a good episode. That was a good yeah. episode. The thing with yeah. online is is it's funny because we're kind of just talking about ways to jack shit. But it's interesting if you want to get some like really, really niche black shit, you can't get it. Like something that's right. on own, something that's on like centric, something that's like if it's BET, it's like the BET awards, are like maybe being Mary Jane yeah. and like some of the newer shows. But like if you're looking for something like random and it's just like, oh, well, this this isn't on Amazon. This isn't on iTunes. Like they, they'll put out something that you actually can't legitimately buy. And if you wasn't like watching TV from like. 8 p.m. to like 9 30 yo it's just no luck but they'll yeah. be having like random ass like you can find random ass like food network shows torrents of it <laughs> yes random ass hgtv shows i'm like damn like it's like are you telling me even pirating even like the dark web is low key racist too. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. That's exactly what I'm trying to say. That is exactly what I am trying to say. And like, and that's the thing, yo, fam. Real talk. Like, if like if our cable provider provided it, I would have the channel. They don't. And and because of that, like, I can't I can't see it now. And at the same time, like, I don't feel like getting like Direct TV or or Dish TV. You know what I mean? Like th- there's no there's no need for me to do that. You know, there's no need for me to do that. And so like um oh I just sent you that I just sent you that link. It's got the picture. Um oh, man. So uh so yeah, but um hey, it it just it, just, it frustrates me. Oh that shit. Look at this See? haircut, bro. See? Yo, the list is going to be so blown. They just saw me so it got real hype. Yo, yo, <laughs> this is like, this is like pre-perm Lando right here. This is like, he got the part, like, before he put that relaxer in. Yes. Yo, what's, what they got? What's, what's space perm though? Like, what is, what is, what is Star Wars space perm? Actually, why is black folks perm in their head? In the, far, in the galaxy far, far away at a long, long time ago, you know what Yo, I'm saying? See, like, but I, I like the fact that, we can, that we're asking these questions now because, like, now that Star Wars is really trying its best to, like, be more inclusive, like, it has to, it has to present these things to us now. You know what I mean? We'll see about it ha- that inclusive because it's, like, Yo, it's still struggles. Talk, it's still like, struggles. We still got like one black person per trilogy, you know. <laughs> oh, oh, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Trust me, I know. And see, and this is where, 
And like, so this is where they really messed. This is where they really messed up. Like, um, okay, here's an example in force awakens. The, now these, these roles were not big roles, but they were still like little small key roles that could have actually meant something later. Or at least people have been like, you know, like people would be like, oh, that's really cool. You know, like, hey, hey, you know, we got a spot here. OK, there and they, there's two scenes. There's two scenes that got cut where um, like it's in the beginning of the film and it, it got cut for time and also got cut for like, I guess, like, you know, continuity purposes or like this scene kind of slowed things down. There's a scene where there is a black woman whose name is uh, Pamich Nero. OK. And she's got like, you know, big curly hair. You know, she's got the the uh, resistance uniform on. And uh, General Leia has just found out that Poe has been captured. Right. So like Leia, Leia and Pam and, and Pam start talking and Leia's like, yo, I need you to go talk. To, I need you to go to Coruscant and go talk with so and so. And go talk with so and so about the fact that we got problems. We need more support. Um, we need more funding because, like, you know, it's about to go down. And so and then Pamich um, goes to, goes to either Coruscant or like gets in contact with another black woman who is like a representative in the government, in like you know, in the intergalactic government for the resistance. And and is out there trumping for the resistance. Right. OK. Now, the scene where Starkiller base, you know, like finally fires off the weapon and like um, and destroys like all um, the planets destroys all those planets. And you see like, and, like those black people all die. We were like, yo, why, why are we seeing the black people die? Like I was so confused. So you're right. saying there was a scene that explained why those black women was there. Yes. Like the black woman that's in the that's basically in the front of the shot. In the front of the shot, as like you know, as the la- it was like you know, this massive ass laser is coming to destroy the planet. That um, that black woman that's in the shot, that was the character that Pamich was supposed to talk to. So you you know, you could have had two black women with like basically like like these keys to- towards you know keys to the resistance. Sure, one sure one was going to die with many others, but at least it would have been like, okay, here's our start here. We do have these roles here. Instead, no, we cut all that out altogether. All together. And and so because like once I found out about about that cut scene, I'm like, oh, okay, well, this makes more sense as to why I have this scene where Coruscant or wherever, wherever planet it was, where I've got this I got this black woman in like, you know, in this like, you know, government style outfit on this ledge looking like, oh, shit, we all about to die. Damn, that makes me low key mad. It, it kind of got me salty, too. It kind of got me. It kind of got me all uh, all salty as well. So. Like, cause it would have been a great start. You know what I mean? It, it, like, it just it could have been a great start. You know, and like even with um, even with like the fact that like um, with um, Lupito Nyong'o playing like a CG character. Yeah, I thought she did a fantastic job with you know playing you know with the character. However, like yeah, it would have been great to see just to see Lupito Lupita Nyong'o. Period. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I know why. Like she explained why she wanted to be a CG character. So like I got past that pretty easy. Like, yeah. She after being um. I forget the name of the character in 12 Years a Slave and so much being focused on like her body and the body damage and like then you get her famous and so much as focus is like on her beauty versus yes. like her, her her talent. I get why she was like, oh, you want me to play a um a CG character? But about that. Let, let, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to be seen. Like, right. I was like, I can get that. Like, that's dope. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I can understand that too. Like, I, I get it now. I get it now, but at first I didn't. Yeah. At, at first I didn't, but I, I definitely get it now. I understand it now for sure. But um But yeah, man. So yeah, Star Wars still got a long way to go. They still they still definitely have a long way to go for sure. But um you know, I just like I said, I hope the steps get better. You know what I mean? Like um and it's even more like it's it's starting to become a little bit more seen in the toys, like um, you know, these whole the whole Force Friday thing, which I jacked the hashtag for for my comic book. Um like I, the last Jedi toys just came out, the first wave of them, and there was you know one for Ray, of course. As far as like the ladies go, it was one for Ray. There was one for um, Rose, um, who, if I'm not mistaken, is of Asian descent. There was another for like a female gunner, 
I don't know how prominent her role is going to be or not. But then like even like the A-wing fighter comes with a female pilot and then you still got Finn and you got Poe. So it's like I said, it's still not where it needs to be, but it's a hell of a lot better than what it used to be. Yeah, that's true. Like, I don't want to hate on it too much because I just watched that trailer for um, the new season of Rebels and that joint like it's going to be hella depressing. Whew, man. <laughs> that joint look like everybody might die. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh. Like, the only guarantee you have, here's the only guarantee you have. The only guarantee you have is that he- the only one that's going to live is Hera. Yeah. Because she was in Hera's Rogue name. One. Huh, what you say? She was in Rogue One. You hear the name for like for five seconds. Like, yep, <laughs> that's the like, only one you know that ain't gonna get murked. And and um and um, what's it? And Saul Guerrero. Besides that, everybody else is a candidate for murked. Period. Yeah. Every yeah. last one of them. Yeah, man, that shit look mad depressing, fam. But it's gonna be good though. <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, ooh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. But yeah, you know what I'm saying? Going back with Force Friday being that I didn't know what Force Friday was. Um, it's the beginning of football season. You know, NFL is is back. You know, people gonna watch it because that's what, what it is. It's, it's America. We love football. And now, you know, last time we talked, it was about the uh Kickstarter, but now that the book is done, the book is out and now it's being released. But Action Lab, yeah, and it's coming out in the midst of football season. You know, people can pre-order now and mm-hmm. previews. And you made a whole website, Force yeah, Football League. Um, dot word. I got dot wordpress dot com. I don't know if you have an actual just regular dot com. Oh no, it's but, a, it's a regular dot com. It just forwards it over to the WordPress site. Okay, yeah. So you know, what I'm saying, go ahead and, and speak on. Uh, speak on forces before we kind of just talked about that first issue yeah now we're a little bit further along and what's going on with it yeah man like um so like with force like i said it's a football drama it's going to be a three issue series um written by me and b alex thompson featuring the art of uh, jay reed and like it's a story about quarterback my name is terrence wright you know brother that's been in the league for a while he's on the uh, last year of his contract um he's playing in the supreme bowl for his team the tennessee boxers they're playing up against the san antonio skyhawks and um and he's playing in the biggest game of his life you know if they win there's a really good chance that his you know that his franchise is going to give him that one last big payday um however there are all these things man that could affect how you know could affect the outcome of the game whether he's on the field or off the field like you know he's got a situation with his agent where um you know his agent always tries to get him you know the best deals but the deals always fall apart um said agent also represents the rookie, the rookie backup quarterback on the team um, who happens to get all the deals and stuff like that and all, all of the um, shine and whatnot. Um, Terrence is also in a relationship with the operations manager of the franchise um, by a lady by the name of Cassandra Knox. And so then there's that, you know, there's that you have two people that are trying to keep the business side business and the personal side personal. And it's kind of hard to do that when, you know, you literally both work in the same place. Y'all both got similar goals, but can you really detach yourself from business when it's always business, if you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and, you know, and so like, and then, you know, there's other members of the team as well. Some of those members on, on the Tennessee boxer squad, they got their own agendas too. But like, um, and so, You got the situation, the first issue, you see like all these events before, you know, that take place before the game and how that could affect uh, Terrence's play on the field. Um, And so like you get this nice blend of drama plus plus action. And it's like that for every single issue. Um, You know, it's it's like that for every every single issue. I don't want to give too much away, um, but like. I was just, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a big fan. I was a big fan of like ESPN when when they first when they first started spending that Disney money and they wanted to do original programming for one season. They did a show called Playmakers and that was actually a pretty good show. It was like a football drama and it was pretty good over the top. Yes, intensely over the top. Um, But like um, that that was also where I got to see Cuba Gooding Gooding Jr. Younger brother Omar. Um, He basically played Corey Dillon with a drug problem. And like there was a scene where he was literally like snorting coke on a dashboard. 
Whoa. Heavy. Yo, it was mad heavy. It was mad heavy. So heavy, so heavy. ESPN forgot that they just got a deal with the NFL to for uh, to air Monday Night Football. NFL came around and was like, if you don't take that shit off the air, we're taking Monday Night Football back. This shit was done in one season. Damn. It was done in one season. But I was a, I was a big fan of like playmakers. I also enjoyed like, uh, you know, sitcoms like the game, like the first two seasons of the game. I enjoyed a lot. Yo, it was really good. The yes. later seasons, like once Brandy was on there, you know, so I know some people like them. But for me, I was like, nah, this ain't yeah. for me. Like, <laughs> no, hey. it's same. Same. Give me the first two seasons of the game. I'm good. And, and I like ballers to a point. Um, but like the way, like, say for instance, like, you know, our, the publisher action lab, the way action lab, when they do press releases and stuff like that, they're like, Hey, give us a quick spiel and give us like two things that people know of that can make them kind of familiar with it. So I said, okay, it's the, it's ballers meets the game. But the difference is, is that like, I can give this to a, I can give this to a 12 year old and they can read it. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not it's not filled with cuss words, profanity or nudity or anything like that. But it's got hard hitting football action and it's got real drama in it, you know. So. um, So, like, I'm really, really excited about it. And it's like we need sports comics, man. Like we need sports comics because there are a number of people I've shown this book to already. And a lot of them don't really ride with you know, ride with watching football or basketball or baseball. But but they'll be cool with watching like a thirty for thirty documentary though. Ooh, yeah, yeah. And and so it's so like a lot of a lot of people that I've given the book to that don't watch sports, they're like, yo, but I watch these ESPN thirty for thirties and they dope. I watch these HBO sports documentaries and they dope. And I like this book, you know. So like I think it satisfies both sides of the spectrum. I think it satisfies that hardcore sports fan and it also satisfies like, you know, the casual the casual to I don't I really don't fuck with sports, but I, I will I do like other things that involve sports. So um like I really think we got something here. It's just like I said, man, the hard the hardest part is, yo man, can you get people to ride for it? Yeah, isn't that like always the hardest part though, especially in comics right now? <laughs> Yes. Yes. Especially right now, man. Like um, the business itself is really in a in a state of in a, just a, I don't want to say state of disarray, but it's kind of in a state of disarray because outside of D.C., because like D.C. is doing good right now. You know, like, you know, they're doing good right now. As a matter of fact, um, as of this recording la- last night. Um, you know, Tom King, Dan DiDio, Jim Lee, Scott Snyder and a couple other cats was doing some skywalking out in Toronto. Damn, for real? Yes. 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 They so, out there living that life, golly. <laughs> yeah, man. They living right now. They up in the six, god damn. Yes. Yes. Yeah, man. They was up there for, for Fan Expo, man. They eating. They living. And so, you know, they're doing good right now. But like, you know, a lot of other publishers aren't really doing too hot. Some are doing all right. Some might have a hit book here or there. But like the market as a whole, it's in a struggle, fam. Like it's, it's, in, a, it's in a struggle. And so... You know, like I so you're trying to do all you can in a market that's kind of struggling for sales and certain things to provide something different to try to get people to read it and try to get shops to buy it. Because here's something else that like I've been trying to stress. And this is the whole thing going with this what with the website for the foot for for force. Um, I always stress to people like a lot of times if you got comic shops, you know, People aren't aren't like, you know, it's not really on the people as much as it is the shops. You could have somebody go to a comic book shop and say, hey, I want this book. Can you order it for me? You still might not get it. You know what I mean? Like, as yeah. opposed to like, you know, now if it's a high volume shop, that's something else altogether. But um, but like um, but sometimes you can order stuff and you can say, I want these things. And, you know, the shop might not get it or they did order it. But like it might not get shipped to them or like all these things could happen. And it has happened before, you know. But like when I made the the for the, like the force of uh, force football league dot com website, my whole point of that was, was that I wanted to give people basically the playbook um, you know, no pun in the like, you know, in, in, in layman's terms, I want to give them a playbook on, okay, this is what the book is about. Here's a five page preview. Here's how you can order. If you, if you have a comic shop, here's a comic, here's a link to a comic book shop locator uh, page. You don't have a comic shop. You still want it. Okay. That's fine. Here's the link to Midtown comics. 
They're based in New York, but they'll ship it anywhere. Oh, look, it's only two fifty nine on their website. They'll ship it to you in November. The link for DCBService.com is coming soon. If you rock with T-Fall, a.k.a. Things from Another World, here's a link to that, too. Like, I'm literally giving you every way possible to get this book. And if you want to wait for Comixology, fine. You know, when that link is available, I'll give you all that, too. But, um, but like, I tried to make it as easy as possible for I know a system I know it's a system then, you know, the whole direct market system is something that really doesn't make a lot of sense to people. But like I just try to equate it to video games. You know, folks pre-order video games all the time. So, yeah. you know, so like if this is the system that I have to work with. OK, if this is my I have to work with, this is the system I have to work with. And so I basically have to do my best to make it benefit for everyone. So let me just let me give you the map. Here it is right here. And I hope you can read it because I've made it as simple as possible. Yeah, man, I like I like the fact that you did that, because I do think the pre-order process is very, very um, unexplained, hard and creators, I think, spend a little bit too much time guilt tripping readers and consumers online. Mm -hmm. No one really explains not just how to do things besides go to this magical magazine that only shipped to retail is called previews instead of doing things like you're doing which is like hey your midtown ships everywhere mm -hmm. dc uh, uh, dcbs this our comic service ships everywhere right. and you and these other stores they got this there's online retailers you could just pre-order click the button like you would uh, any other book video game damn the action figure album whatever you want to think and it'll come to you, you know, as long as you pay that shipping fee or yeah. you order enough, you know, you you might get that free shipping. But that's all you have to worry about. I think um, you're the second person I've seen do this. I could be uninformed. You know, the only other person I saw do something like this is uh, Ulysses Farinas. Another person who's also been on this show mm -hmm. a good number of times when it's time to talk about uh, putting out new comics and uh, industry talk. And I like uh, it's taking these independent maverick members of the comics community to push forward to help readers and consumers try to buy these these comic books, especially these comic books that don't fit in mm -hmm. the usual norms of what's mostly promoted, which a lot of times is superheroes and or whatever image or dark horse is putting out or whatever licensed property boom and IDW and such is doing. Right. So. Oh yeah. And, and you know, we, and we talk about this all the time, Julian, we'll see people online. We'll see people online. We'll see people in public that like, will scream constantly scream for that. They want original material that they want new stuff. And so, once again, it's this thing of, hey, we're providing it for you. We're providing it for you. And, you know, so I'm like, you like, you know, these folks can't say that we're not legitimately trying. You know what I mean? I, and like, I know, like, I know that I know the Internet world. I know Twitter is just a very small fraction of of like the world itself. It's a strong piece, you know, but social media is just like a very small, you know, small section of, of all this when it comes to like marketing these comics. You know, sometimes you do got to go store to store. Sometimes you do need to like, you know, send out some flyers to some shops. S you know, sometimes, you know, you got to do. Sorry about that. If um, shoot. No, it's all good. OK, yeah, man, like my computer got like all these got all these sites up. And it's just like, oh, let me play these noises. I'm like, no, I ain't trying to do that right now, fam. I'm talking. Um, <laughs> but like. um but sometimes like, you know, you get there's all this outreach you have to do. And and like I look at it, I, I look at it and I'm just like the, the the amount of outreach for, let's say, like my goal for force issue one, honestly, like my goal is five thousand copies. That's my goal. Like if I hit five, that's a massive success. Um, that's a massive, massive su success for Action Lab. And it's a super success for me. Um, the reality Maybe if I'm maybe if things go according to plan, maybe twenty eight hundred copies. And even then for Action Lab, that's good. It's good. 
But like, you know, but like I want better than that, though, because once again, this is something that like the game doesn't really have. You know what I mean? Yeah, we got some books in the in the direct market that have sports in them, but the sports aren't, you know, but sports aren't the main focus. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even know what books are those. Like, you know, Southern, like say for instance, like Southern Bastards, uh, through okay, by yeah, image. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, it, like it, it, you know, football is a part of it, but it's not the whole thing. You know what I mean? Um, you know, there have been like, you know, a few other sports books that have come here and there. Some are futuristic, some, you know, but like, it, but still, it's still, it's not, it's always something, it's always something that is not what we're doing, period. And so, um, and so like, you know, like I said, I just, I want to show people that this can work. I want to show people that like, this is a hell of an excellent book. I want to show people that, you know, Jay Reed is the future. You know what I mean? Like, I want to show people like, yo man, like no one, like when it comes to like, there's a, there's a, there's a page, there's a page where it's just all football action. And the way Jay, you know, laid it out, like, you know, he's got the quarterback, you know, doing like his three step drop. And then you see like a panel where it's like the camera is pulled back and it's got the quarterback and the three step drop. And literally it's diagramming the play for you, you know, with arrows and everything. And I'm like, this is really great for somebody for like for, for someone who knew nothing that, that would know nothing about football. It's like, oh, OK, I see where this play is going. I see what the quarterback is trying to do. Like, yo, that's really dope. You know, so. Like, I just like I really just want this to work. Like it's I, I, for me, I think it's a very um, ambitious. I think it's a very ambitious project. And like this is the kind of stuff I want to do. Like, you know, we've come like Julian, we've come like a long way. I remember like, you know, you know, eight, nine years ago, you know, we'd be talking about, yeah, man, you know, like I, I want to shot it like, you know, this like, you know, Marvel property or this DC property. And like, you know, because we just thought, you know, comics was just like, yo, man, let's get this gig over here. You know, let's get, you know, let's get this uh, IP gig over there. And like, don't get me wrong, like, there's like, you know, a small handful of like IP, like IPs that I would like to do, but like, like a lot of that, a lot of that's dead for me. You know, I just would, I prefer to just make, you know, just make, you know, and collaborate with you know, with folks I want to give opportunities to make original works. And, you know, if that certain IP comes around, I might give it a shot. Like I got a list of five, you know, I got a list of five. And if it's not on that list, I ain't worried about it. Yeah. So um, how many issues is this first story art going to be like? Uh, what's what's the initial run for force? Uh, initial runs three issues three issues and then followed by the trade um each issue the way it should work out um the way each issue should work out you will get um a 24 page story plus a backup and the backup like say for instance for like the first issue after the um after the fir- after like you know the story at the first issue ends the backup is kind of like a a faux sports illustrated article hmm huh. And it's an interview with the quarterback, Terrence Wright. And like this is an interview that took place like a week before uh, the Supreme Bowl. And in that, like you'll have like, you know, you'll you have like, you know, the guy from For- it's called Force Illustrated instead of Sports Illustrated. It's Force yeah. Illustrated. And um, and so what you'll have is you'll have this guy, you know, basically asking questions and talking about Terrence's like, you know, um, past and like how he got to where he was and the fact that, you know, he wasn't a, you know, number one draft pick. He wasn't, you know, he was, you come to find out, you know, he wasn't drafted, drafted at all. And that his road to get to Tennessee and his road to get to Tennessee wasn't as easy as we think it, as we, you know, as we think it is, as we think it it was, um, or is. And so, um, plus, and like, it will also have like images, like grayscale, like grayscale images that will like kind of be like portrayed as like photos. Yeah. So, um, that'll be portrayed as photos. Um, so you can see like, you know, Terrence's past and present. And so, so I really think it's a really good idea to do that. Um, because like I said, it just gives more context to the story overall. And it also gives you a better understanding 
of what Terrence has gone through to get to this point. So, um, what are some of your hopes in terms of reaching? Like, uh, do you are you trying to reach some new audiences? Are you trying to reach out maybe to fans who feel a little bit underserved? And like maybe reading uh, sports comics because you know we talked about this before, mm-hmm. uh, and like people you know want to kind of downplay manga or things like that, but there's a significant base of, of when you read manga that's just all about sports, and it's just weird to me how Japan can have manga about American football, mm-hmm. and this could be a complete part of ignorance. But I know American football ain't popping like that in Japan. Not in comparison to basketball, right. soccer, and baseball. You know, like those are things, but they have like they've had successful football comics. Like American football comics. Yeah. And it's weird. It's like if you wanted to read a, a comic about football here, you either had to read that or what, read Blood Bowl? Or what Mutant League football maybe came out way back in the day, and that's yeah. like, and what was the NFL Super Pro? Even that they couldn't make a football comic. No, he got to be a superhero football player. Yes, yes. Oh man, Super Pro was so bad. It was so bad, yo man. But hey, that got that got Fabian uh, Nietzsche's uh, New York Jets tickets. Hey, so hey, that's good for him, you know. Yeah, exactly. But no, man, no, you're right. Like, um, like I, I want to reach. I want to reach that manga crowd with this, but I, you know, and I also want to reach, you know, comic book readers too. But, but like, um, the whole manga influence was one of the main reasons why I wanted to do this book. Like I grew up, I grew like, you know, I grew not that I'm like that, that old, but I grew up reading like, um, slam dunk and, um, cause it was called slam dunk, right? Cause I always fuck yeah. up these times. I grew up, you know, reading slam dunk. like you know, basically I piecemealed it together. Like I can, it was one of those things where, okay, I got this issue here. I got this copy here. I got this copy here because like I would go to half price books and they would have like these, um, collections. It was kind of like a monthly magazine, kind of akin to like, you know, Shonen, you know, kind of like, like Shonen jump, but like, it wasn't just comics. It was um, it was like comics. It was like stuff that was going like, you know, stuff like me on television for like their kid shows, like because I originally bought them because they had images of Super Sentai shows in like in the middle of the book. Like and those would be the color photos. Okay. And as a matter of fact, I, I still I still have them somewhere. I have to find them. But like one of the books had um, and this is where I found out that Super Sentai was different than Power Rangers, but I knew it came from that. But like, I, this is where I really discovered the differences for when, um, yeah, we want to side note Power Rangers for a second. We got, we got to talk about this. Um, <laughs> when, when like we got into season two of Power Rangers in the United States and like, you know, they got like the Thunder Zords and all that stuff. Well, you know, over, over in Japan, that was Die Ranger. So what I didn't know was, was that like, you know, OK, there's the White Ranger. OK, so clearly that's a different design than like, you know, your basic Power Rangers. But then, you know, they put them on the squad. But what I didn't know was, was that overseas, Die Ranger was its own thing, own uniforms, you know, different colors, um, different weapons. You know, just it was insane. I was like, yo, this is wild. And the villain like and the things that the villains did on, uh, you know, that show, like on with that footage over there was different than over here. Yeah. There was some that they did over there I was like yo this is way wild you know and so like you know the um instead of a putty patrol they look like those like um really bad like speed racer villains and and like they had these brooms and stuff to sweep people away all this other wild stuff but the uniforms was dope for all of them that's and true so, you know the uniforms was dope as hell so so I was like man I'm all for this I want you know I want to see more of this but in that same book, it also had like, you know, slam dunk and it was and then like it wasn't translated. So like I'm just sitting here looking at the pictures, just trying to figure out what's going on. But also in that magazine had an article about the return of Michael Jordan. Really? Yes. Yes. And so I was like, 
I was like, okay, I was like, this is dope. And so like I had I have a few of them. I have like four or five of them. I have four or five of them. And like I know they're around here somewhere. And um I'll have to like shoot some pictures of them for you so you can see. But yeah, man, it's wild, man. It was so wild. I loved it. Absolutely, absolutely loved it. But no, but no, but like stuff like Slam Dunk, Ice Shield 21. Um, there was also like a tennis manga that like I really, I really enjoyed. Um, like all that stuff like really inspired me just just say, why can't we do sports comics in the States? Why can't we do sports comics that like don't involve superheroes or like mutants and monsters and stuff like that? It's a viable it's a viable genre, you know, you know what I mean? Like, especially in an era now where like, you know, sports and analytics and fans and fantasy sports shit's just as nerdy as comics. Super nerdy, super nerdy. Yeah. Hell yeah. So what's the difference? What is the absolute difference? There's, there is no difference. You know what I mean? So come on. You know, that's what I'm like. Come through. Come through and get this. It's worth your time. Come through and get this. So um, and if we get some and also, if, you know, if we get some like conventional comic readers, too, that would be fine. You know, but like I'll take them all. You know, because that's the whole that's the whole thing. It's like, yeah, I'm targeting I'm targeting towards like, you know, like I said, sports fans, the casual, the casual reader who likes the ESPN 30 for 30s and the manga fans. I'm, you know, I'm kidding. Like I'm I'm targeting towards them. At, but also at the same time, I need everybody on this because that's just how the comic market is. It's one of those things where people catch on after the fact. And and the thing and the whole thing about it is if they catch on after the fact, if our initial print run, like I said, let's say it sells 2,500 copies, initial print run, then might be 3,000 to 3,500. So if everybody catches on late, not everybody might get a copy unless they go digital. Now, if they go digital, hey, man, there's copies for everybody. Um, you know, and that's that's another thing, too. Like, I, you know, like. I, I can't push this enough, man. Like I know there's some people and some sticklers that think that like digital doesn't mean anything. Digital comics mean something, fam. Like if I can get weekly Shonen Jump on the cheap for a whole year on my iPad and and see how many copies they go through, it means something. You sent me you sent me that link about how like digital was catching up the paper over there. Yeah, man. Yeah, it is. And things like Line, um, because you, that's basically like a tech m- messaging company in like South Korea, but it's got to mm-hmm. the point where it's like a full media media company. And like, yeah, man, like the, the things with East Asia is at times they are a little bit beyond us because they got to certain points earlier in terms of like the later parts of uh, industrialized society Mm -hmm. so there's things in which I think like Americans straight up and down and I don't even I can't even say Americans but like the mainstream or the majority of people in power continually fight and comics for me continually fight the means of which other entertainment industries have already moved on to. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you're continually fighting digital and saying digital don't matter and you have a store, of course, digital does not matter to you. Let's be real. If I'm buying music, if I have a record store, I am not going to promote iTunes, Spotify, Apple music, Amazon for records. Right. And probably, let's be honest, in terms of selling physical records, I bet you Amazon is at the top. Because oh, yeah. they're the top of almost everything physical right now. Yeah. But like they, go ahead, I go can't ahead. but yeah, I just I can't 
it doesn't make sense to me. If digital didn't matter, Amazon wouldn't have bought Comicology. Exactly. Exactly. That's just silly to just just think that. Like, if retail, if physical, like, if certain things didn't matter, certain companies wouldn't have invested within it. I do think that comics have a bad are bad at promoting themselves within the digital market and within yes. the avenues of the digital market to really, excuse me, to promote and push these things and other means. I don't understand why these companies don't have larger budgets. And I don't know why I don't see comics on different things on the Apple platform pushed mm-hmm. higher. I yeah. don't know why that I don't see comics as much on the front page of Amazon when I log in. Mm-hmm. I don't know why um, I don't see maybe the maybe some of the boom and IDW Cartoon Network books promoted on the apps for their cartoons. I don't know. I don't know why they're not doing these type of deals or make up putting this part of the contracts or whatever. I do know that at least with the Power Rangers book, when they add something, when I see the ad for that little fighting game on my phone, I'm seeing the characters that they do in this Power Rangers comic book with the art mm-hmm. and they for the, for the commercial for the new ad for the game when I'm on Instagram or Facebook. And I'm like, well, damn, they put the the weird alternate universe white green ranger. Like, I'm just like, oh, okay. I wish I saw more of that. Yeah. And maybe and maybe it's self people they they just trying to protect like their world and their business model. Like, like I don't want to talk about digital. I want to downplay digital because it doesn't matter. The crazy thing is that none of us actually see the digital data. So no. I think everyone is assuming a lot. Mm-hmm. Even the re- even the the real life re- the box retailers are like assuming that something doesn't matter because they're not getting all the data. Like no right. one's getting all the data, but the people who own like the people who are selling like the publishers have this data. Correct. Yes. So I, I don't. It's I don't know, man. Like it, I want to see just, more happen. Yeah, it's just me- it's messy. It's 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 messy because like I said, like. You know, things evolve. And and the thing is, is that if, you know, if you're a brick and mortar store and there are like a lot of fantastic brick and mortar stores that know how to also evolve, um, you know, some evolve to the point where just like, OK, well, we're going to focus more on games because not only that, like, you know, board games have become a thing that have become a major thing again for like the last like, you know, 10 years. Yeah. And, and so they're like, OK, we're going to get on this game. We're going to get on these board games. We're going to make money doing that. Some are like, yo, man, we still got magic the gathering, fam. <laughs> Come on down, fam. Let's have this Magic the Gathering night. Um, some shops have balanced out to where they're like, OK, we got toys and Funko Pops and collectibles. Here's comics over here. You know, like a lot of shops do like a lot of shops do things differently. So, it you know, but at the same time, there's still these there's still these shops that's like, yo, I got Marvel books. I got DC books. They're over there. And and that's it. But, um, you know, things have to evolve. Shops got to revolve. Retailers got to evolve because, like I said, digital was always going to be a thing. You know, it was always going to be a thing, regardless of whether you wanted it or not. It was going to be a thing. So, you know, as a shop, you got to do your best, you know, make sure that, you know, you survive. Now, I will say this. I still say returnable books should be on the table. You know, for like if you're a retailer, returnable books, if, if not, not if you're a retailer, if you're a publisher, if you're a publisher, man, you should have we should, you should have returnable books, fam. I, honestly, like if these like I understand, like, you know, and I know they'll say, well, you know, that just man, that would just destroy publishers. Your first two or three years, I got, you know, for your first two or three years, let that be exempt because your first two or three years, you're literally just trying to, like, find a foothold and freaking survive as a publisher. You know, trust me, I, I know that during my time with Action Lab and now in my second stint, like, uh, you know, the first two or three years was all about survival. Then you survive. And after you survive, Diamond's like, yeah, you guys are good. OK, these are the things we're going to provide you now. Um, and so and so like in, in our deal, you're like, yeah, our books are returnable. And so, you know, folks buy our books. They sell pretty good. Um, if they don't move, they come back. 
you know, like with DC Comics, it's the same thing. DC Comics, the way they work, their books are returnable now. And honestly, it doesn't hurt them because they're part of Warner Brothers. And Warner Brothers is like, look, just make the initial numbers look good. We here for these IPs. All right. We here for these IPs. Make some hot ass books. Don't care about the returns. We just want to see the initial numbers. The end. And so like so I don't understand why if I'm a, if I'm a retailer, why I got to buy like 100 copies of a book to get a special variant cover. And I can't return that book. And I can't return those books. Yeah, man, that is crazy. Just to talk on like pure regular like this comic business, I have no idea what is in Marvel's head to think they can do that for lenticular covers when DC just puts that joint up as just a regular order item and stores could just order the lenticular cover. Yeah, and they, they did a whole line of them. Like they mm-hmm. never ever did that as a variant. Remember when they did those? Like was it was it was it Forever Evil? It was a yeah. like every book had a particular cover. And I would go to the store and they were like mad books with them. They didn't have to order anything special. They were mm-hmm. just particular covers. And they've done it a couple times. Like I don't know why Marvel want to be so special and be like, yo, all the particular covers are somehow better that you got to order like crazy amounts of comic books to just get the opportunity to order some a couple of these issues with covers because nobody's ever bucked back and now and now finally retailers are but some retailers are bucking back finally like they're just like no man we ain't doing this no more because the thing is for like the longest time and this is the way it goes with like a lot of things in life it's like okay this is just the way it is and this is the way it's always going to be and then finally somebody steps up is like why is it like this and they start questioning things and like no nah, i ain't doing this shit no more why should i do this this makes no sense. How does this help me? And, you know, how does this help me? Like for some, you know, for some like during the DC thing when they were doing like the whole covers and you still had to like order X amount. Even then it was a thing of, OK, if I get this cover and I sell this cover, this and this is before the whole I think if I'm not mistaken, both before like the whole returnable thing. Um, they're like, if I sell cover X for this much, that covers these books I bought. I can take these books here. I can use these for free comic book day next year. So it all bal- it all balanced out. Whereas opposed, like on the other side, it was a thing of I got to buy all these books, and they're also putting books in my order that I didn't ask for, and I got this cover, and now I got to sit on this, and I don't know if I can move this. That's a problem, and the thing is, you can't keep doing that because the only thing you're doing is making making it harder on the making it harder on the retailers, and eventually that's going to break the system. That's going to break the system. But the thing is, at the same time, like, you know, if if that's the, if that's the way it's always working, that's the way it's supposed to be. And no one's going to question it. Of course, but this is how we get to this state. So and like I said, I was shocked to see, like, you know, retailers actually making posts and talking about the fact it's like, yo, fam, I can't do this anymore. You know, and I'm not and I'm not I'm not and I'm not buying these lenticular covers. And here's why. And I was just like, Wow. I was like, for real, I was straight up, I was straight up shocked, fam. I was straight up shocked. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that to be, to go off like it's doing. And it also makes me think, it's like they're doing this, and I think the new Superman story arc has a bunch of lenticular covers, and I don't think, from what I've read, that anybody has to order anything times a previous issue's number mm-hmm. just to get the variant lenticular cover for the Oz effect. Right. It's just like, just order that version. Right. So, yeah, man, it's, it, it's, it's, like I said, man, it's just messy. It's it's just messy. So like for me, like it's a thing of like, if you're in the top, if you're like, if you're in the top five, if you're in the top five, top six publishers, I don't understand why you don't have returnable books. I mean, at all, but also at the same time, if you're in the top five, top six, and you've never had to do it and no one's asked you to, why would you? I get that too. I, I do. Like I see, I see both sides of the game. I, I get it. But at the same time, like I said, yo, y'all really want this business to survive. Like y'all need returnable books. You're like, yo, actually I've been around five years. We got returnable books and we ain't dead yet. You know what I mean? I see the numbers on our books. Some do good. Some don't. We still here though. So we still here and we ain't in the top five. Y'all can go do that. And y'all will still live. And everything will be okay. 
you know, and like, and that's, and that's only a partial fix to the problematic entire system of the comic book industry as a whole. You know what I mean? Like, but like these whole band aid fixes, yo, this shit got to stop, fam. <laughs> it's got to stop because it's this. It, it's not, it's not going to get any better. It's not going to get any better. Like, I, I personally feel that we are near another collapse. It feels you know, like it, doesn't it? You know, it, it feels like we're, you know, and I'm not trying to be, you know, all Fox mold or paranoid and stuff. I'm, I'm just trying to say it just really feels like we're on the verge of another collapse. You know, and so my whole thing is, is that it's better to it's better to prepare and try to be proactive than reactive. Because one thing about the comic book business, man, like they are like the comic book business is the are the champions of like being reactive. But where's but like being proactive is so much better because like at least if you're proactive and it didn't work out, that's okay. There's a plan B. Okay, that's fine. Go ahead. I'd rather be proactive than reactive any day of the week. Yeah. You know, but hey, man, what do I know? You know, what what what, what do I know? And and I, and I, and, I, and I say that sarcastically because, like, you know, there isn't really a seat for us. Like I got to see I got to see that action lab. I got to see that at action lab because five like over five, six years ago. Like I knew a bunch of dudes that was all making comic books independently and things got and things for all of us just stalled. And we were just like, yo, this ain't working. So we combined forces. So we made our own roads and we made our own ways, good and bad. And and so honestly, like if 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 I didn't if like if I didn't do that, would I be where I'm at right now? I don't know. You know, like I do know that Kickstarter has also been a big thing for me, too. Like Kickstarter has been like Kickstarter has been a fantastic thing for like creators of color and for like, you know, for for black men, black women. Like we have found our voice there through crowdfunding. And and we found our voice there because the business itself was just like, no, y'all, you know, y'all ain't like us. And, you know, y'all y'all don't know how to do what we do. I'm like, well, that's not true at all. You know, like all we needed was the opportunity, you know, that's all we've ever needed is the opportunity. And those opportunities are few and far between, you know, because they're like we've once again, we talked about this a gajillion fucking times. There is no there is no there are no rules to this as far as like getting in and what getting in actually means, you know. But like for us, for us, it's different. There are rules, there are doors, you know, there it's just all types of like really silly shit, especially if you're a writer, you know, like I still don't understand how like a dude like here's a perfect example. Let's just use Brandon Easton, for example. Um, he's currently, you know, he's currently on mask right now. And mask is about to end, I think, after like nine ish, nine or ten issues. Um you know, this dude has written for licensed properties before he's written, for, you know, he's written for like um, he wrote for Hasbro. He wrote for um, he wrote for a couple of like I think like IPs overseas. Um, he was part of the ABC writers program. He wrote like, you know, he wrote on these on the uh, Peggy Carter uh, writing staff and he's got all this experience. And the only thing like outside of mask, the only other thing like I know that he was given was like a backup during like one of those Marvel events. Like, that makes no sense to me. Like, that honestly makes no sense to me. But, like, if a cat does, like, a fan comic, they might get on right away. And, like, and, like, and, that's, and, it's, no, and it's no offense to anybody that's, that does fan comics because some of them I really do like. I'm just using that as an example to state that there is no one way to get in. But at the same time, a lot of it doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, it is, it is interesting there's interesting ta- tactics in terms of uh, picking talent that I don't know if in the modern era um, all the people that pick talent are necessarily or even whatever processes or non-processes they have actually work out. Right. Right. And then I just I, I just see problems with it. I, you know what I mean? And and like I just I, I just wish. I wish people understand, would understand that, like, you know, I really don't like talking about this shit all the time. You know what I mean? Like, it would be great 
to like not have to talk about this shit all the time. But the problem still exists. So because the problem still exists, we got to talk about it. You know, because if I if if I if I wait on moderates to do it, it, it won't happen. Their heads are in the sand. So we got to be the voice. We got to talk about this stuff all the time. Does it prevent us from possibly getting work? Yeah, because we're automatically viewed as troublemakers. And, you know, you know, and like they'll make all the types of excuses for us, too. I'm like, no, man, there's just a problem. I'm here to addre- I'm here to address it. Let's talk about it. let's actually do something about it. And let's put some action towards it so we can, like, make this happen and make things better for this business as a whole, you know. And um, I, like I said, man, and I just really and like in some spots, yeah, it's gotten a little better, but there's still issues here. And I just want us to do something about it. Yeah, but um, so sorry, I didn't mean I didn't mean to sidetrack us. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just thinking, like you know, we're about what we're in the twenty year span of the twenty year era of like the crash and like the really down period of comics. Like you know, we're like what ninety seven to like what. 99 or 2000 was pretty was pretty bad out there you know yeah man you didn't know you couldn't always tell if you was reading wizard you know um <laughs> no 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 but even then if you think about it bad for them back then was x-men selling like two hundred twenty-five thousand a month yeah man versus what half a million or whatever like uh but going by the feelings i, I don't know if, if everyone's talking about it because everybody's talking about like how much money is being made but it's like this weird undercurrent where people say there's all this money being made all these properties are getting optioned and then you hear all the stories of like well all these stores are like on the crux of like failing and we got you know stores it's like yo i can't do x so i'm gonna write this blog post and then you you know you hear the rumors of the stores in there like it's little special uh, Facebook groups and, and chats talking, talking about like how rough it is in certain areas it's just like mm-hmm. um, do you have any I guess uh, plans or or um, ideas of how you're going to finesse if things uh, take a really poor turn and, and you know 2017 and then 2018 mm-hmm with in terms of putting out new material oh yeah yeah man it's kickstarter man like like kickstarter like kickstarter has been like one of the greatest things for me because i've been able to find an audience there so i can put out projects through kickstarter without without any problem so like if the if, if the business falls apart if the comic business falls apart i still got kickstarter i can still i can still publish some things that way and i got probably I probably got six. I probably got six more Kickstarters in me, six or seven. I got six or seven more in me, um, and I can do that. And that's and that's on that's on the books and it's on and it's, it's still on the plans. Like as a matter of fact, I got one that's going to sh- that should drop in November, and um, and then after that, March twenty eighteen, July twenty eighteen, and then November twenty eighteen. So. So like yeah, if the if the comic industry falls apart, I still have Kickstarter and that's cool, and that's fine. I don't want it to fall apart. I want it to grow and be better. Like I always have to have like multiple stream, you know, multiple streams. I have to have multiple outlets of, and venues, you know, and and like I try to tell people, especially like you know these young cats trying to get in now. It's like yo man, don't put don't put your faith in this business as a whole like make sure you got options you know what i mean like yo learn about like the gaming industry learn like you know like tabletop and role playing games like learn about them joints because like depending on on who you deal with if you're an artist you know working for some of these gaming companies you can make good money if you're a writer you can possibly make good money with some of these companies learn about like the video game industry especially with concept and design learn about that if you're an artist and like, you know, you like storyboards, see if you can get on, get in on the storyboard game. Like I see a lot of brothers and sisters out there doing storyboard work. Like a lot of like the artists I follow on Twitter are brothers and sisters that have been doing storyboards like since forever. So like, 
just have multiple outlets and have multiple venues. You have to, you you have to like, is if you rely, if you rely just on comics, you might be in for a world of hurt because there are some people in comics that are eating, but like, Compared to everyone else, though, man, no, nah, it's like it's like the one percent and everybody else. Mm. Yeah, it does seem like the, the the further I go in this, there's a there's a there's a clear class. Oh yeah, class shift, a class that is not really spoken about. People like to talk about it in terms of like X and. and you know, top writers, top artists, but it's like, I don't even know if it's really like that because there might be some people on that list that aren't really considered top that might be like mm-hmm. caking up. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah it's it's ridiculous. Like, it's, it's crazy. You know, it, it is, but, you know, like, yo, man, I'm glad y'all got that paper. I'm glad y'all got that paper. And, you know, but at the same time, it's like, it's all white dudes. You know, with the exception of maybe like, you know, Jim Lee. And like maybe like a small like a, you know this person here this person there but like it's all white dudes though you know and like I just like you said I I know that we are talented enough to be on the same playing field as them if not better you know like think of like and like I always joke about this with people and sometimes people get mad when I say this think about how many things in life like how many you know entertainment venues sports. Um, you know, like con- contributions to society, um, you know, like, you know, everyday things have either been created or made better because of people of color and black people. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So only thing, like, you know what I mean? Like, so like, yo, just give us the opportunity. Give us the opportunity. We take it far. You know, we'll take it far. We'll, look, we're in this to make money, too. You know what I mean? Like we're in this to make money too. And we can make, and we can make things sell and we can make things work. So I don't know, man, like I I said before, all this is a mess. And, and even though it's all a mess, I still got dreams that I want to put together and put out here. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So if the business does fall apart, I got my other outlets. And then the thing is for like Kickstarter, Kickstarter works for me in a way to where I can, I can, like I said, I can give people opportunities. They can get some money. And I can get something out there to the people, period. Um, because, like, yo, I keep my nine to five. I keep my nine to five because I like having health care. OK, like I like being able to pay my bills. I like being able to, like, you know, have a place to stay and not worry about, OK, am I going to get this next gig or am I going to get dicked over? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I like there is a guarantee at my job. I know some people like, well, you know, you just got to make that sacrifice and like, you know, and, you know, you can do it and just work hard. Yo, quit throwing meritocracy, meritocracy shit on me. I do work hard. OK, like, I, you know, like with this comic, sh- with this comic shit, I've always worked hard. There's never been no half stepping. There's never been no half assing. Don't tell me I don't work. Hard. Like, don't tell me just keep working hard and like you can just walk away from your job, please. Meritocracy doesn't work like that in comic show. Yeah, and a lot of those people sometimes have uh, support systems. Yes. Yes, exactly. Exactly. You know, I ain't gonna say no names, but, yeah, some of them cats do got support systems, and some don't. But, still, some of them do have support systems, and, like, they had ways to then be like, okay, I can grind on this for, like, a few years, I'll be okay, and then I get that gig, and I'm all right. And I'm like, no, like, I I need guarantees. I need guarantees, and my my current 9 to 5 guarantees me, like, I can live, and I'll be okay, and I can help my family when they need my help, and help those around me. You know, so like if I do like, you know, so if I do a Kickstarter, I can do a project where that is not, you know, I can say like, I was like, I, you know, I do okay. You know, I can, you know, my job, I do okay. I said, I'm able to pay my bills. I'm able to live. But like, if I also had to like use like my work money to then like try to also fund all the comic stuff I do, like I would be so in the red. No, nah, I'm like, no, nah, I'm done with all this stuff. <laughs> I'm out, you know, like, no, I'm not doing this no more. So so yeah, man, like, so Kickstarter, that's, it's a wonderful place, man. 
It's a wonderful place. It's it's giving us it's given us the opportunities that other outlets have refused to give us forever. What are your thoughts on Patreon? You know, there seems to be a lot a lot of push towards towards that now, mm-hmm. along with Kickstarter. But I, a yes. lot of the times, I'm seeing a lot of people pushing like hardcore and a whole bunch of different avenues. You know, from podcasts oh, yeah. to to comics creators to yeah. writers or a lot of things pushing towards Patreon in terms of content. Do you think that's something you would try to do in the future or uh, a, maybe. Viable, a viable way of, of putting out work? Maybe. Like my biggest concern with like Patreon isn't Patreon itself. I think Patreon is a, is a wonderful thing. Like I, like I give some bread to some page to some Patreons, you know what I mean? And so, and so Speaking of which, I better give Martheus some money towards his Patreon or he'll text me. He'll be mad because, you know, how Bobby get. So, uh, <laughs> you, you know, you know, how Bobby, you know, how the Bobby Brown, the comics get. I need to give him some money towards his Patreon, too. But like, um, like, I don't have a problem with Patreon at all. Like I said, I support it. I like it. There's some people that like I follow and give money to on Patreon. For me, if I did a Patreon, my whole key is is that I have to make sure people get something on time. Or like, you know, I have to guarantee that like they're always going to get whatever I have like put in these tiers that they get what they pay for. And if I'm going to do something like that, I have to like plan a lot of stuff out in the he- uh, out out ahead of time to make sure everybody gets what they want. And maybe oh, excuse me. And maybe one day I will do one right now. I can't. You know what I mean? Like right now, I honestly cannot. And like I would be playing myself and fooling myself if I did. So so right now for me, it's a no. But the one thing being a part of Patreon as being a part of Patreon as far as like giving money to those that are using Patreon, um, it allows me to study it. It allows me to see how like it works for like all these different people in different creative fields. Like, you know, some are animators, some are just writers, some talk about social issues, uh, some talk about just movies, some are podcasters. Like it, it's super, it's like super various. And now I get time to study it, learn more about it and figure out how can I make this work best for me, you know? And then at the same time, also think about, okay, like I know what my social media like imprint is like, how many of those cats from social media that follow me on social media, how many of them will actually give up that bread? Cause like with Kickstarter, I look between fate, like between like Twitter is normally like my biggest kicks Kickstarter, like uh, support area, uh, Facebook second. Um, and then after that, it's just like little trickles here and there and other venues. Um, and even then that Twitter support is like 30% via Kickstarter is 30% Facebook, maybe 15. So then, you know, that's 45%. So 55% comes from like, you know, 5% here, 6% here, 7% here, you know, from articles and other types of write-ups and other types of things, word of mouth and, um, anything else that I can do to just continue to spread the word. So then it becomes a thing of it's like, okay, I have X amount of Twitter followers. Um, You know, how many can I really depend on for like actual support? You know what I mean? And so and then 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 that comes into question. And, you know, because like we've talked about this, how like when you're you know, you're looking for support, you're looking for backers, you, you know, we also because we can talk about this. We are also we also have a very fragmented and jagged, um, creative community as well, um, as a whole and on the, on the black side of things, it's extremely fragmented. It's extremely cliquish. Um, like it's got more factions than WCW wrestling night from the nitro days. Um, please, I, you know, I'm telling the truth, you know, I'm telling the truth, you know, mad fragmented. Like we got like for real, like black comics has the equivalent of NWO Hollywood, NWO Black and White, NWO Wolfpack, LWO. <laughs> um, let's see. Let's see. What else was there? The Million Dollar Club. Um, oh, damn. And like when they rebooted WCW and like all them wrestlers from like ECW and them other outlets came in and like they had like the new like new blood or whatever. Like it's all it's like it's so fragmented. 
it is so massively fragmented. So a lot of times, a lot of cats is on their own island. It's just like, okay, I just got to do what I can. And this is all I can do, you know? And dude, I, so sorry, I've I've done lost my train of thought. It's all good. Just like (laughs) I lost my train of thought, but like, no, but just like finding that support and, and like, and maintaining it is tough, especially in a very fragmented, especially in a very fragmented culture where it's like, sometimes folks will say they ride with you and they ride for you, but they really don't. And, yeah. and like my whole thing is, is that like, yo, if I say I ride for you, I will back you to the best of my abilities. You know what I mean? Like, am I on social media every day? Oh, hell no. That shit can be mad stressful. I like going outside. You know, I like going to drink some wine. You know, I, I like going with Bay to the movies. I like taking walks. So I'm not, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not on social media like every single day. But like. You know, if I'm on, if I see something I like, like, say, for instance, uh, Ted Lange's Warp Zone. Oh, he tweeted about that today. Yo, let me give him that retweet. Yo, I saw Chuck Collins tweeted something the other day. Man, I need to go and retweet something of his or talk about something that he does. You know, yo, OK, T. Franklin working on her bingo love, like graphic novel. I, I got to talk about that. You know what I mean? Like, so like I try to like I try to do those things. You know, and like the thing is, like T will reciprocate that love. Ted will reciprocate that love. You know, Chuck will reciprocate that love. And I'm not saying that, like, everybody's got to reciprocate one another. But like, I know their support is genuine. You know what I mean? And so and so like like the black comics community is like mad fragmented. And like and that's why, like, sometimes I'm just like, you know what? I'm on the outside. I'm on the outside of it. And honestly, I'm okay with that because I told you, no matter what happens, I'm going to do me, period, because I have no choice. Because like I can't wait for nobody and they're there. Like I said, I can't wait for opportunities. I have to make opportunities. That's just how it is. So once again, back to the whole Patreon thing, it's like you got to make sure that like, you, you know, you have supporters that are honestly going to back you and be there. You know, you have to. And so and like for me, that's like such a long term thing for me. Like, I'm not sure if I am ready to commit to that with Kickstarter. That's like a 30 to 45 day commitment. And I can get people on and I can get people on and I can get them to ride um, to a point. Um, But like, say, for instance, with Patreon, it's, it's a whole different game. And and so, like I said, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I've thought about doing a podcast through Patreon Like, you know, and just like doing seasons. And even then it's like, can you guarantee the content for what people pay? You know, like I I do a newsletter, you know, that's for free. Um, Tiny, tiny letter, tiny letter dot com slash take the crown. And that has been like, you know, very sporadic, like once every other month or so. And I started that a few months ago. So like that's, you know, that's sporadic. So like I'm like some trying to teach myself. It's like, OK, if you're going to do something like this, you have to be timely. How are you going to be timely on top of everything else you do on top of making comics, on top of working for Action Lab, on top of your nine to five, on top of having a personal life, on top of making sure that you make time for yourself, because if you don't, no one else will. On top of motherfucker, go to sleep. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So uh it's 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 a it's a challenge, my man. Here's uh here's gonna be my final my final question. Um how are you dealing with as an independent content creator and um and also marketer of that content with the changes and tactics in social media. You know, when we first started, you know, when we first doing the earliest in like the the late 2000s, you know, Twitter was just, you know, you, you tweet, you put some words out. Facebook, you post. And like, you know, Instagram wasn't a thing. But like now... Right. Now, not only Instagram a thing, but there's Snapchat, and then you would make content for, for like not just Instagram itself, but there's like multiple pictures in, in Instagram. There's moving videos. There's stories. 
there's Facebook page, there's campaigns, there's moments and and Twitter, there's all these different things and like how are you how are you dealing with this you know trying to promote all these things on the different formats within all these different separate avenues to promote and engage with people and basically for the most part if you're a one man operation or it's like you yeah. and just your collaborators you, fam <laughs> let me tell you I had to learn how to step up I had to learn how to step up and be like yo man after I did that video for uh, the uh, force kickstarter last year I was like you know we could do more with this right so I had to go back and reteach myself. Okay, look, you're going to make, you're going to take this video, you're going to chop it in half, you're going to make it into additional videos, you're going to change the music, you're going to change your wipes, you're going to change, you know, like you're going to re-edit, tone things down. Now you got two trailers for this comic book. Now telling people to go to the to forcefootballleague.com to learn more about the comic and get a five page five page preview. Bet. Okay, I could put that on Instagram. I can go put that on Facebook. I can go put that on Twitter. I can put I can put it on multiple multiple venues. I can put it on Tumblr. Okay, I can make that work. Okay, well that's great. Okay, so yeah, you got two videos. You, you're going to need more than that. All right, I had to learn how to make gifts, and literally, no lie, Julian. Hold on one second. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had to like you know I had to finally learn how to sit my ass down and finally learn how to make gifts, and I should have learned I should have learned that a long time ago. Because, you know, we live in an era where it's just like, yo, man, video over everything and, you know, images over everything. And so I was like, OK, we need multiple gifts. How many? Maybe three or four right now. Are we going to make more later? We sure as hell are. And in that gift, you got to program it to where you get the images. They flow a certain way. Show them the force. Lo- show them that force logo for And then forcefootballleague.com. You know, and it's just a constant reminder. So you got to get your gift game up. You got to get your video game up. You know, your videos up. You got to get, you know, building websites like, dude, I work in I.T. The last thing I want to build is a damn website. (laughs) It's the last damn thing I want to do. However, I bought I bought the um, the domain to force the the, the domain rights to force football league dot com like two years ago. Because that's how long it's taken to get this book off the ground, you know, and so, and so I was like, okay, well, we got this domain. Why don't we? And so I was like, but I don't feel like paying money for you know to build, you know, to get like hosting services and all this stuff, and I have to transfer domains. I was like, you know what, WordPress. So <laughs> I went to WordPress. I was like, oh, there's a free option. Oh, I can make this work. Oh, I get three gigs of like image slash storage space. Oh, I could definitely make this work. Oh, okay. So I build a website and I'm like, yo, forcefootballleague.com forward to this WordPress page, please. Bet. So then there's like this. Also with the videos, with the videos and whatnot, it's like, oh, okay. Well, I got a Vimeo site. Let's put them on Vimeo. Oh, okay. Well, we better make a YouTube site too. Let's put them on YouTube. And now it's just like, oh, that's right. Action Lab got a YouTube site. Who got the password? All right. Well, I got to go find out who got this password. And then once I find out who got this password, I can put them on there too. Like, you you like you have to and this is the thing that this is the thing that sucks this is the thing that sucks it sucks but it's also really awesome because you learn you learn what your strengths are you learn what your weaknesses are and you learn that when it comes down to it in comics you are the marketing department like like Action Lab ain't got money to be running like mad marketing campaigns. Yeah. Come on, fam. Marvel got money too. They ain't because Marvel is run off that it's always been this way. So why should we change it model? Okay. Um, so I don't really expect that much change from them, even though they got money. But like, you know, we ain't got the type of paper to be like running like all these types of ads and whatnot. And like, you know, marketing only goes so far in comics because comics as a whole has always been awful at marketing. Their marketing is, yo, here's that phone book, peace. Because that phone book caters to retailers. Because the way the comics comic market is, it's like retailers are what's most important. You know, your fans aren't aren't as aren't as important as those retailers. So just make this phone book, boom. That's that's your marketing plan. Well, 
like I said, I learned that the hard way many years ago. You are your own marketer. Any comics creator has to know that. They have to learn that. You are your own marketing department. So you have to like, you have to learn what your social media imprint is. And look, I get it. Not every creative person can also be a marketer because there's some people that are immensely talented, man, but like their talent lies within their talent and that's it. You know what I mean? Like, and that's just it. That's all there is. And like, and if you try to tell them these are the other things that you have to do, like then, then their creativity starts to falter because they're trying to do other things that honestly they're not built for, you know, but like me, my entire life, my entire way of life and living because of just how, you know, just because of how I was raised is if you don't learn as much as possible, you're fucked because that door might close on you there. So you better know how to open up that door over there. So I, was, I had no choice, you know, so I had no choice. I had to make sure that I knew how to make videos. Now I had to make sure that I learned gifts. I had to make sure, yo, let's do some Facebook ads, fam. Let's do some Facebook boost posts. Okay. Let's, let's target, let's learn how to target certain parts of the country and make sure the areas that have football, where it's important to them, whether it be high school, college, or pro, they, that those areas get targeted for these Facebook boost posts. So they see this football comic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like that's the whole other thing too. Like that's the real, that's the one cool thing about Facebook as annoying as Facebook can be. The one cool thing about Facebook is this whole targeted ads thing and targeted, uh, you know, boost posts or whatever is really clever. It's really clever. Like for like 30 bucks, I can like, I can like my posts can be seen to like people that I specify wanting to, that I specify to see it like football fans, sports fans, documentary fans, ESPN fans, um, folks ages 18 through 50, um, male, female, boys, girls. Like I can like target all of that in certain towns and cities and say, OK, y'all got this. Y'all get to see it, you know. And so like that thirty dollars can end up being like either. $30 worth of possible pre-orders or $200 worth of possible pre-orders or maybe even more, you know, maybe that directs a lot of traffic to midtowncomics.com. Maybe that will direct traffic eventually to dcvservice.com. You know what I mean? So like it's sometimes I think like, like, just like I said, for me, it's the thing of, yeah, we, we did it. We made this book. And like for most, once you, once you make the book, they're like, okay, my job's done. I made the book. Your job's just started. The job's just started. So I hope I answered the question. I hope I answered the question properly because like I know sometimes this Negro has a long way to, to like I, I can make walking across the street like a Lord of the Rings adventure. <laughs> so, you know, I hope I properly answered that. And like I said, images, you know, constant images, imagery, um, reminders like in, in the images of where they need to go to get more information. Um all these things, all this shit's important because you can still do all that, provide all those images and provide all those other things. And there's still people that who will still, here's a perfect example. I put a Facebook post like, uh, for the whole force Friday thing. And I, I want to thank Lucasfilm and Disney for making the force force Friday thing, a thing, because I was able to use that for my book and I appreciate that. Don't sue me. Um, but like I said, you know, it's a different kind of Force Friday. I'm talking about football. Um, and I had like an image of Force and I said, go to forcefootballleague.com and you'll find out how to order the book. Get a five page preview. Learn more about the book. Blah, 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 blah. It's in the whole post. I see some people like, yeah, that's awesome. Congrats. There's a cat at the bottom. Yo, man, how many issues is this? Fam, it's <laughs> on the website. Fam, it, it, I said it right there. Just go to the website. The website will tell you everything. It's right there. It's right there. And but like, you know, but you can't say that you, you can't say that because you're not trying to be rude. And so instead, I just put a link to the whole the how to order page. And on the how to order page, it's that's where it states. It's a three issue series. You know, pre order issue one in September comes out in November. Pre pre order issue number two in October comes out in December. Pre order issue number three in November comes out in January the end it's just that simple you know but like sometimes you gotta lead these cats to water too and so 
like I said, man, like making comics, like the bit, like the business of making comics, honestly, it has to be like the most work in inten- one of the most work intensive fields ever, no matter your position, because even when it's done, you're never done. Yeah. Yeah. I got nothing else poetic to say about that. <laughs> you know, and like and like I said, man, like I'm not trying like I'm not trying to be the downer of it either, you know, because like a lot of us, man, we work, our, you know, we work our asses off of this and like and we're working our butts off and there may not be a payoff at the end. And I and like and for like a lot of the new cats or a lot of the cats to like go and start to do their own thing. If they don't know that walking in that like, yo, this may not hit at all. Regardless of how hard you work, regardless of how hard you market, regardless of how many people you tell, regardless of how many people, how many shops you call, regardless of like any everything, all of it could take. You could have Beyonce said it best. You could have the best plan in the world and do everything that you were supposed to do and do it all the right way and lose. Yeah. And I and like and I really and I really think that's something that like folks got to understand, like, you know, and, like, and, and, and it's harder for, and it's harder for us because once again, those opportunities are few and far between. So like for us, we always have to be a hit right off the jump. We got to be a hit right off the jump. Like there's no room for failure with us. Like how many mediocre cats in comics right now constantly get work and their works have been mediocre for like forever. But like for us, like if we're not like in top five, this top five, that New York Times bestseller, if we're not a celebrity, like all like all these rules that are constantly applied to us, but they're not applied to them. So that's why sometimes I'm like, yeah, man, fuck comics, B. You know, you know, but like I said, I'm not trying to be I'm not trying to be a downer. I'm just telling you, this is how it gets sometimes. You know, this is how I get. This is how I get sometimes. So, yo, prepare for it. Prepare, prepare the best you can. Always, you just have to. You know, because otherwise, like you know, like I said, man, you in for a world full of hurt. So, as we wrap up, I want you to tell people where to reach you at. Yeah. How to see you online. Okay. Again, give the the URLs for the book. Yeah. And when it comes out. Yeah. And tell people what's something dope to listen to. Okay. All right. Cool. You know what? Actually, let me give y'all. Let me let me go check my iPhone right now to talk about something dope to listen to because I got some options here. I got some options. Come on, come on, iPhone. I'm 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 gonna have to get a new iPhone, fam, because like um it's starting to two uh, weeks, B. Two weeks. <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> yes, I, I'm just I'm trying I'm trying to hold off. It's hard. It's hard. I'm trying to hold, pause, but like you know, like I'm trying to um I'm trying to do that. Okay, as far as stuff to listen to, um, Count Base D, um, song Too Much Pressure featuring Snoop Dogg. Man, I love that track. I started listening to that like about a, about a week ago. Really, really dug that. Daily's new album, The Spectrum. Daily spelled D A L E Y. Um, the Spectrum is a dope record. Like um, Daily cut like one of the best slow jams of all time um, on his previous album called Alone Together with Marsha Ambrosius. <sighs> but anyway, The Spectrum, dope album. Um, if you like, uh, let's see here. Oh. I'm tell you something else. Going back to Snoop, yo, can we can we quickly just say that like Snoop honestly has cut some of the best records like in like the last decade? Oh, he got some joints. He got a he's lot got, of solid joints. He's got like with Pharrell. He's mm-hmm. gonna cut. He's gonna cut some solid, some solid I, listenable summertime cookout chill ass songs all the have, time. Have you heard his Never Left album? Yeah, it's good. It was good. <laughs> Yo, it was that real album good. Was good. Cause that's the that one album. with the young, with the picture of him young on the cover. Yeah. And in front of like, yeah. was it a one eight seven or whatever long, whatever the street joint. And it's just like, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a good ass album. Yo, it's that's a real good album. So yeah, man, I had, I had to show that. Some, I had to show that some love too. And, um, let's see. I also been listening to some Sabrina Claudio 
uh, thanks to you. I appreciate I appreciate that. Forgive me, hip to game. Um, I started to go back and listen to oh, the um, some some clips albums, um, and I forgot how much I enjoyed the the clips so much. And I have been heavily listening to Prince's Batman soundtrack, and that Batman soundtrack is much better than I re- than I recall. It is way better than I recall. Um, as a matter of fact, and like I actually have a stronger appreciation for Bat Dance than I did when I than I did like maybe 10, 15 years ago. No, oh, I love Bat Dance. Bat, da- Bat Dance is so Bat da- Bat Dance is so dope. Prince was like, you know what? I'm going to make this song, and I'm going to make this song, and I'm I'm really going to make it like four or five songs in one. Okay, I'm going to make this song so dope that y'all might. Y'all might not even buy this album, but if y'all don't buy this album, that's okay because I'm putting two other songs that I love in this song too. Like he put Electric Chair in this song, and he put um oh god what other song he put in there? He put like two. Uh, he's like and um the future. He put the future and and Electric Chair in Bad Dance because he was like yo. These are two of my favorite songs, probably. Y'all ain't gonna buy this album, but I'll be damned if y'all miss out on these lyrics. Hey man. Hey, it's that's why Batman's the man. (laughs) Batman, see, you can say a lot of other things. He got a dope car. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He got a dope outfit. He's super smart. Yo, the reason why he the best superhero in the modern era is that he got his own Prince album. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but yo, it's fan. I love that album, fam. For, like for real. I really, I really thoroughly I love that album a lot. Um, also been listening to listening to some Gold Link too. Um Oh, and thanks to a uh, special shout out to um oh man, I'm about to I'm about to mess up uh, about to mess up a name real quick. Oh man. Our, our brother from the UK, uh, An- uh Tunney, Andrew Tunney. Uh Mr. Tunney. Um Mr. Tunney told me that Pharrell and Noriega are teaming up again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's 2002 all over again. And I heard, and like the, the song was dope, yo. <laughs> the song was dope. And I was like, I can't even be mad at this. Like, I cannot even be mad at this. It was dope. So, uh, so yeah, man, that's what I'm listening to right now. Now, as far as where you can find me, um, you can find me at um, on Twitter at Sean R. Pryor, S-H-A-W-N-R Pryor, P-R-Y-O-R, at Sean R. Pryor um, on Twitter. Um, you can find me on Facebook. Maybe one of your friends is a friend of mine, and like you can find me on Facebook. Um, there's also a Facebook page for Force called Force Football. Um, you can find me on Instagram at The Sean P. Show. Um, also on Tumblr um, at The Sean P. Show. Um, also, if you want to know more about force, if you want to know more about force, this is all you got to do. Just type forcefootballleague.com. You go to forcefootballleague.com. That will kick you over to the force website and you get a, a, a five page preview of the comic. Um, you also find out how to order the comic, um, how many issues um, are, uh, you, know, you know, constitute the actual uh, comic as a whole. Um, you also get to see videos, so you get to see some trailers. This website literally tells you everything you have to do to get the book. Period. First issue drops in November. Second issue drops in December. Third issue drops in January. Pre-orders September, October, November. Like I said, I can't make this any easier. Like it's akin to, to pre-ordering video games, except it's cheaper. So, um, so yes, Force Football League dot com um and besides that like i said kickstarter coming out in november for another project don't want to really give anything away yet um but when when it happens i'll make sure everybody know but um but yeah man real talk though julian um i know we do culture trapping together i know you know you've been on my, you know when i used to do the black box podcast you know we did a number of shows together um i just honestly sincerely wanted to say thank you for always being real with me um and for like always like just like supporting me and all and like also like I said by being real also let me know if shit wasn't hot because <laughs> there's a lot of people out here be like yeah man that's good good job good job and I'm like you know that shit ain't hot you know that shit ain't good <laughs> you know what I mean like yo yo fam look like I'm not here to put shit on the refrigerator okay like I'm here to like 
you know, do some do some really cool stuff, do some fun stuff. You know, yeah, I might do some lo fi stuff later, but like but like I just appreciate the fact that like you've always been real with me and you've always been a fantastic friend because of that. And like I said, I consider you family. So, you know, because like I I'm for real, like I just I kind of just get tired of the whole, you know, yeah, that's great. Put it on the refrigerator stuff, man. You know what I mean? Like, and I think too many people do that. And I know we don't want to hurt people's feelings, you know, like I, I know we don't want to hurt people's feelings, but at, but also at the same time, you know, we need to like be more real with each other so we can get better. You know what I mean? You know, so we can just get better because that's all I want us to do is just get better and be better, you know, because, you know, the quote unquote doors are going to be, you know, constantly are, are harder to get to every single day. Yeah. You know, so like we that's the thing, man. We got to be a thousand percent. We got to be like a thousand percent when like other cats only need to be 75 percent. If that. So I just want us to be better. Well, hey, man, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for being a good friend. And, you know, um, I guess I'll talk to you on the air next time we do culture trapping. I don't know when that's going to be, but you know, it'll, it'll be out soon enough. It'll be out soon enough. We'll make somebody else mad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll have we'll, some more shots to shoot. Oh yes, but hey, I love it. I love it. Like we like are kind of like I would, you know, in a way, we're kind of like our culture trapping crew. Yeah, I know we're kind of like the new addition of this stuff, but we're also like low key Dezus, like um, Dezus and Miro. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that. I love that because like I just love it. I love it. Like it brings me joy. It brings me un- like unadulterated joy. But but no, fam, thank you. I appreciate you. Hey man, no problem. Don't pull up at six a.m. to cuddle with me. You know how I like it when you loving on me. I don't wanna die for them to miss me. Yes, I see the things that they wishing on me. Hope I got some brothers that outlive me. They gon' tell the story. Shit was different with me. God's plan. God's plan. Ignorant Bliss is on iTunes, Google Play Music, SoundCloud, Stitcher, Mixcloud. It's also a part of the Taylor Network of Podcasts. It is also part of Critical, the movie review network on Blog Talk Radio. Um, you can follow on Twitter. IGBL podcast. You can follow me at Julian Lytle, L Y T L E, on all the major social networks. Um, Ignorant Bliss is on Facebook, so follow, like, and the such. Ignorant Bliss podcast. Oh, please review the show. On everything you can and share it. And the email for the show is ignorantblisspodcast at gmail.com. Always check for the show notes for links to the people that's on the show, along with uh, any other little factoids and links to how to listen to the show and my playlist for the show. Also, the website for the show is ignorant-bliss.com. And peace. Wishing and wishing and wishing and wishing they wishing on me. Yeah. Yeah. Bad things. It's a lot of bad things that they wishing and wishing and wishing and wishing and they wishing on me. Yeah.